in Canberra. President Poroshenko, thank you very much for talking to 7.30. Thank you very much for the invitation. You've indicated that you would like to buy uranium from Australia. How much and how soon would you like to buy uranium? We just to launch this project for the building up the energy, not independence, but at least diversification. Uh, after what's happened with the coal supply, gas supply, for us as a country who has more than 60% of the energy, electrical energy produced by our station, we produce a nuclear station. And beforehand, we were connected only with the Russian one. We shouldn't find out uh, steps how to make us uh, more energy diversified. I think that would be a good idea if we find out an opportunity to use Australian uranium uh, for our nuclear station. It's fairly urgent for you. you a lot of your plants but do I, uh, rely on coal from an area now that's in dispute. I think that I hate the idea to have anything urgent in nuclear energy. <laughs> so better to have a security and reliability. But I think it's a high time to launch this process. Many Australians would be a little bit concerned that Australia would be talking to Ukraine about providing uranium given the uncertainty in your country right now, given the conflict involved. Could you give a guarantee that that material won't fall into the wrong hands and that it will be used for civil purposes only? Come on. We are a country who has before the third nuclear arsenal in the world. Exactly 20 years ago, we voluntarily gave up this third nuclear arsenal uh, in exchange for the security guarantee we receive from the United States, United Kingdom, and France, Russia. China, and Russia. Now Russia is not uh, is uh, an, an aggressor on our territory. Twenty years ago, Ukraine did give up its, its nuclear arsenal. There are some people who wish that Ukraine had hung on to it, given what's happening now. Do you ever harbour that desire again to be a nuclear power? No. This is, would be absolutely irresponsible. Believe me that the strongest security in the modern world in the 21st century supply but not nuclear power. This is technology from the 20th century. We can win uh, the aggressor only when we will be united and when the whole world demonstrates exactly what we have now, solidarity with Ukraine. We've just been talking about trade. Uh, Australia's relationship with Ukraine is more than trade. We've been brought together by the Malaysian MH17 disaster. Where is that investigation at now? Uh, the leading country is the, the uh, Dutch specialist. We have a very positive cooperation experience and mm. the preliminary results is already delivered the information that uh, the attack was done from the territory controlled by the terrorist sponsored by Russians. Uh, the uh, uh, surface-to-air missile which uh, were delivered from Russia and uh, we have a satellite photo of this rocket launch. But the Dutch preliminary investigation didn't finger anybody, it, it didn't blame anybody in particular. It said that the aircraft had been hit at a high velocity by, had been peppered by material, but it didn't identify anybody responsible. This is not published yet, preliminary results, believe me. The, uh, all the specialists are unanimous about the person responsible, not person, but the, the side responsible for the, uh, this disastrous attack. And I, I really ho hope that at the first half of the next year, the result will be published and that will uh, make it necessary for the immediate action for bring the responsibility to, the, to those who make this attack. You say terrorists are responsible, who? Uh, Russian-led terrorists who uh, occupied territory of the Donetsk and Lugansk region of Ukraine. Uh, these weapons, state of art, very sophisticated modern weapons, was supplied by Russia. You seem to have a really good rapport with Tony Abbott. I really admired how the Australian uh, demonstrate the solidarity with Ukraine and uh, uh, the this tragedy uh, again make us much closer than before. 
What did you think of Tony Abbott when he said he was going to shirt front the Russian president? Well, he's a great state leader. Uh, I think that uh, he's very responsible. And uh, I think that the way how he organized the G20 in Brisbane helped us a lot to be closer to the peace deal. The pro-Russian separatists say they don't want to give up. How is this going to come to a resolution? This terrorist that represented nobody. And how we can find out the way out from this situation is just stop the war and launch the political process. Well, there have been many Western leaders who have said very strong things. The leader of Canada, leaders of the United States, the United Kingdom, our Prime Minister. But words to this day don't seem to have had much of an impact. Why are you, why are you so pessimistic? <laughs> this is absolutely not true, believe me. Because the sanction which is coordinated, presented by the old Western leaders is working. Do you have enough confidence in the United Nations, especially the Security Council, given that Russia is one of the permanent members? Look, we should understand, and we should be absolutely frank and straightforward. The conflict on the east of Ukraine demonstrates the ineffectiveness of the post-war global security system, including the Security Council of the United Nations. And it, it happened if one of the permanent members who has a veto right is an aggressor. And we should, we should develop the new system who can stop this very dangerous development of the situation in the whole world. How could the Security Council be changed to be more effective in your view? Uh, I doubt that we are ready now to discuss publicly the way how the Security Council should be changed. Maybe we should withdraw the veto right from the permanent member. Do you think the world has entered a new form of Cold War? No. This is not uh, a Cold War, but uh, because of the fact that this is not a Cold War, it's not become a less dangerous. But I am an optimist, and I'm an optimist because of the fact that the uh, global unity are existing. I am a president of peace. I am not a president of war. Ukraine is a country of peace, not a country of war. And coordinated efforts of the international community is bringing situation to the peace not to, to escalate the war. You said I'm a pessimist, you're an optimist. When do you think you'll have your peace? Uh, look, it can happen tomorrow. And why well, I'm a pessimist optimist also that if we will have a ceasefire, the people will see that they don't need the people with their arms, with their machine guns on the street. They simply break them the opportunity to come back to the normal life. We win this war. President, I think most of the world have their fingers crossed as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.